class as an introduction to acid-based theory. The Arrhenius definition of an acid states that it's a substance which donates protons in aqueous solution. So we can see an example with hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. It dissociates 100% foreign protons in the chloride anion. Likewise, with a strong base, they donate hydroxide ion. And sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, will dissociate 100% in aqueous solution to produce sodium cations and hydroxide anion. There are seven strong acids, which we can memorize by using the mnemonic no so cla cla cobri nitric, sulfuric, chloric, chloric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroionic acid. All these acids ionize 100%. Uh, when you write this uh, pattern, you'll notice that uh, you write the anions first, no so cla no so cla cla cobri, and then you write 3443 three for the number of oxygen atoms. All of them have one hydrogen atom, except for sulfuric, which has two hydrogen atoms. Uh, there are six strong bases. They are composed of uh, group one cations and group two cations. So uh, the way you remember that is Nacre, Casserba. Nacre for group one, Casserba for group two. Group two obviously has two hydroxide ions. And they are sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Now, uh, in the evolution of acid-base theory, Broston and Lowry observed that it is more appropriate to say that acid is something that can donate a proton or an H plus ion to another substance, and that a base is capable of accepting an H plus from a, from a substance. This, uh, this theory was developed because they had to recognize the existence of things like ammonia. Ammonia, when it's dissolved in water, produces a basic solution and increases the concentration of hydroxide ions, which we can see over here. Base, which is hydroxide ion. So what, ha what has happened is the ammonia molecule has pulled the proton off the water. So we have a base acid pair, and then you get a conjugate base and acid pair on the other side of the equation because ammonium behaves like a weak acid, whereas hydroxide is clearly a base. If you look at the way water behaves with an acid like acetic acid, Acid, the acetic acid can donate a proton to the water to generate the hydronium ion, and the result, and there, what results is a conjugate base, the acetate anion, which is slightly basic. So here, in both cases, you have water behaving like an acid under these conditions, and water behaving like a base under these conditions. Scientists soon observed that water also undergoes what's called auto-ionization. Two water molecules will occasionally collide in aqueous solution, and they'll generate a hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion. This doesn't occur very often. It, it's a, the, the, uh, the occurrence is very infrequent. But at 25 degrees, water, pure water, will contain a certain amount of uh, hydronium ions and a certain amount of hydroxide ion. So if you multiply the two concentrations, you get 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. You can also restate the same set of conditions by saying a proton and a hydroxide anion. So the interpretation of that is that in neutral water has uh, a proton concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7, and that it equals the hydroxide ion concentration. The pH scale was invented to describe the vast range of H plus concentrations, so uh, they found that uh, if you described it as a logarithmic value, took the negative log of the H plus concentration, we get a value that's called pH. So for example, if the uh, proton concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 molar, then the log of the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 gives you 7. So neutral water has a pH of 7. Um, and neutral water will also have a concentration of hydroxide ions 
that equals 1.0 times 7 to the minus 7. So at pH equals 7, the uh, hydroxide and the hydronium concentration are the same, from which we observe that the pH plus the pOH of pure water always equals 14. So for example, if the pH equals 4, then the pOH has to equal 